Western Lynx in 148 scale. Nice kit, didn't really enjoy making it though. Find out more here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now today, indeed, I am building the 148th scale model of the Western Lynx from Airfix. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these, then you might want to check out the companion video, the box opening video, it tells you about all that you get in the box. If you've already got one and you're thinking of making it, then this is probably very much the video for you. Now, if you enjoy anything you see on my channel, please do remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all future videos as they are released. And of course, as usual, if you want to give a bit more concrete support for the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks. You can do that by becoming a channel member or through any of my partner programs online, which includes the FX Affiliate Program. Click on that link, buy anything at all from FX, and at no extra cost to you, FX will make a small donation to this channel. Right, enough of all that, let's crack on and see how I built this 148 scale Lynx from Airfix. Right, the first thing we have to do is there are a lot, and I mean to do I mean a lot, of options here about various holes and things like that to drill out for various bits and pieces. So go through your instructions, find the ones that relate to the kit you're doing. Remember there's quite a few versions, there's three country versions and there's also different weapons versions, uh, the air sea rescue, anti-shipping, whatever. Find the ones you want, then I suggest you just draw on the base here, the holes that need to be drilled. All of them are one millimeter, which is good. And then when you're absolutely sure you've got all the right holes, just drill them out. I'm going to start putting the chairs together now. Um, first of all, put the sides on the pilot seat. So it sits in a slot like that. There we go, like this. And the same for the other side. Then the bottom cushion goes on, like just there. And then finally, there's a structure support structure goes underneath engages with the little pegs that I hope you haven't sanded off and there's the pilot's seat done okay we can start putting in a few pieces of the cockpit furniture here furniture they're actually controls this is the collective lever this has two functions. It has the throttle for the engine, or thrust selection for the engine. It's not actually a throttle. Uh, thrust select, power selection. By twisting it, twisting the handle, and by lifting or dropping the handle, that uh, changes all of the rotor blade pitches collectively. That's why it's called a collective. Um, so that's essentially like the pitch control on a propeller-driven air aircraft. That changes how, how much bite the rotors take out of the air as they operate. So it's a balance of the power demand from the engine and the pitch angle of the blades that determines your lift. And, but you know, you can't just rack it into full pitch and full power because that puts too much stress on the system. And that's dangerous. So it's balancing. That's why helicopters are so damn difficult to fly. Is the, this constant sort of twing and throwing you're having to make to keep it airborne. Anyway, next thing goes in is the rudder bar, the rudder pedal. Now I think I'll put some glue in first on these. There's another, another little thing there. Actually, I don't know what it is, but someone will tell me goes in there, so, so 
the rudder pedals go in there. And then there's this very small thing here. I have absolutely no idea what it is. Maybe it's a, a controller, a, a, a um, adjustment for the pedal position or something like that, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, it's a little thing that goes in there. And that's that's all these little bits done. Now the next, the, on the British aircraft here, there's only one control column. Um, the other side is, a, I presume, a weapons office or an observer weapons office or something like that. And there's two seats need to go in, obviously. So I'll let that dry. Then I'll spray this, the interior floor colour, which is grey, and pick out the bits I need to in black because the seats are a different grey and there's loads of options and da 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 da. So that's what I'll do next. So I've put the control column in here. Um, I'll paint the top of that black in a bit and then the seat can go into place here. So then we put these decals in. There's one here and there's one here. We put decals on the main panel and then we can glue the main panel into place. This front fuselage frame goes in, you can see how it fits in down here, behind here and sort of sits around the seat. And it just needs to sit back slightly, sort of kind of like that. And we'll start building the electronics boxes that go in the main cabin. These are supposed to just go together but this one won't so we'll investigate why that is. Now because this is the one with the sea skewer missiles, there's a load of electronics needs to go in the back. I need to make sure they go in the holes we drilled earlier. Which could be a bit more problematic than I had first thought because I thought I had cut drilled these out correctly but maybe I have maybe I haven't okay footstep uh lovely looks okay and then this thing goes in here looks okay Okay, that's the electronics in. You can put the uh, seats in now as well. Just like that. Then you can put the back wall on, like so. And just make sure it kind of sits at about 90 degrees to the you can use that, there you go, hey, sits at 90 degrees to the floor. You can put this back bench of seats in as well. Then we are ready for the roof to go on. So sits into there and it sits into these clips into there at the back. Yeah, try and get these to close up as much as you can obviously otherwise you're going to have real problems later on. Now the rear wall of the cabin can go in as well. So there's the cab section finished for the moment at least. I'm not happy with these shuts, shut lines here at all. I'll see what we can do about that. That seems to be an awful lot you can do other than hold it in place. I'll figure out some sort of clamp for that. 
So again here we've got to go through and do some drilling of holes and cutting of holes depending on the options. Now for all of them if you're doing the folded rotors which I am then you need to cut this hole here because this one is for the uh, rotor stays. Um, for option A, all of option A, the British version, there's this thing, I don't know what it is. Anyway, so you need to cut out the hole here and you need to drill out these two holes as well. And finally for the British version you have to do this hole on the side for this sensor or whatever it is, chaff dispenser or something or other. Um, if you're doing the Danish version, um, you do all of that, uh, this bit only if you're doing the folded um, rotors of course, but there's this um, skid that goes under, or this protective assembly that goes under the bottom, I don't know if it's aerial or whatever, and there's um, holes that you need to drill here and here for that. But if you're not doing those, of course, don't bother doing it. Likewise, if you're doing any of the armament versions, so anything with uh, the side-mounted 50 cal, um, with the side mounted weapons stations as well for the depth charges or the sea skewers you have to cut holes in there for the pylons on each side and before the two halves of the fuselage go together we just need to put in these little bits of glass here and then uh, what I'm going to do is just add the tiniest little spot of extra thin cement in the corner and it kind of just makes its way around by capillary action. That would be enough to the rest. And it won't haze because there's not really enough of it. And I'm going to leave it to dry anyway. And while that's drying, we put the uh, top runners for the doors up here on each side. Right, and now comes the big moments where we have to fit the cab into the fuselage. Um, I'm going to start at this end with the alignment slots and work my way along. These will take a little bit of messing around with because um, you know sometimes when you when you do something outside the cabin and then put it in there's always going to be alignment issues always. So and there's going to be grip issues and space issues and just work your way around them and see what goes where it should and what goes where it shouldn't and do you know what this is okay at the moment so I might just glue this up first and then have a look at the other side you can put the other half on now and the tail fits okay because <laughs> there's nothing there to worry about at the front, um, you know, that's almost there, not quite, but it's almost there. Um, yeah. And up here, it looks terrible, but if you actually push the parts down, they actually do close up. So that's going to be the trick, is to hold these things in place while they set up with the glue. It's going to be one joint joint face at a time to hold it in place until it's relatively stable and then chuck in some you know some tape or whatever to hold it in place while it sets but I think that's going to be the trick oh, let's get to it now if this uh, top sort of engine cover thing I think the best trick here is to Get one side lined up, fitting and lined up properly, and let that set, and then get the other side fitted. Just because there's going to be, could well be a little bit of a twist in the fuselage from all the bits and pieces that we made earlier. So just get that one side done first, then do the other side, then it'll be absolutely spot on. Then there's this cover for the spine that matches up with the uh, rear rotor drive shaft cover here. Right, onto the engine exhaust. Now the exhaust pipes come in two halves, which I've already glued together. Then feed through this fairing. It's a little tight. 
and sort of rotate forward so you end up like this. Okay, so this these little this tab that joins the end of them together is at this end and it sort of sits there just slightly proud of the surface of the aircraft there. Then when it's ready it can go into place on the back of the engine nacelle assembly here on the top of the aircraft. We'll continue with the front end of the engine bay, engine, I don't they call it nacelles, I don't call it nacelles maybe, engine compartment, the top of the engine compartment, we'll call it that. Uh, there's three parts here that go together. Then there's these bottom pieces, these sort of help define the inlets for the engine. You can see this is this is essentially the inlet for the jet engines that run the links, the turbo shaft engines. Same on the other side. Then finally these compressor discs go in to the front, like so. Okay, then the front of the uh, intake area goes on here, and then there's this piece here that goes on, um, and this is the stem of the, where the rotor axle comes up. Um, I have to say some of this fit is really not very good. I mean, I'm sure this piece here is supposed to be contiguous, supposed to be one, and it's not very good. Um, bits like here and here. There's a lot of bits and pieces of filling, which on a kit that's relatively young, and at this scale, I'm kind of surprised by, but well, yeah, there we go. It is what it is, we'll do what we can. On these these halves of the undercarriage um, supports, there, there's a couple of ejector pins here. They need sanding down. There's some um, one mil holes need drilling out here. And once you've drilled all the holes and you've sanded down those ejector pin posts, then you can put the two halves together of the undercarriage supports. Just uh, tape them up or clamp them up, a bit of extra thin around the edges as well. Mm. Then on the keel piece, the base of the fuselage here, again there's more holes to drill out. Go over them again, so highlight them, the ones that you need for your <laughs> version of the kit. These are 0.6 mil holes needed for the fleet air arm, and this one at the top here is one mil hole that is needed. So now we can put the undercarriage supports in. I sort of hesitate from calling undercarriage legs because they're not really just little sponsons and sit out outwards. And then the bottom, this keel plate as it were, can go in and we'll, we'll fasten and finesse that into place. Fit really not good on this bit. Really not great a fit. So I think what we'll do, as usual, we'll start at one end and then just work our way along, almost tacking it into place. Now we have the um, nose assembly to go together. First of all, this bottom of the nose. This is the bottom of the nose, this is the top where the electro-optical sensor will sit. Then there are these side 
panels that go in. Like that. One on each side. And finally for the moment I'm going to put the nose on the front of the aircraft, get it to settle as much as I can and then I'll worry about doing all these joints up again later on. I mean, I, I'm happy to admit most of this is probably my fault for not getting this absolutely spot on to begin with, but I, don't know, I, can, I can clean this up. The tail boom comes in two halves. These clips together, we'll tape that up and glue them, and then they fit in the back end of the fuselage. The forward looking electro optical device comes in three parts, and there's also a clear part that goes over here. Then when it's finished, it can go in place on the front here. I mean, it can turn around as well, but if mine's parked up, so I'm guessing it's going to be facing backwards. Right, so we can put the wheels in, gear legs in, and then there's a outer panel that fits over the, the end just to tidy it all up, like so. There's a whole load of bits and pieces to go under here. Just go around adding all the little extras here and there. And uh, you'll get to a point where you think, yep, yeah, that's enough. I don't actually need to do any more. But it will take some time. The front windshield I've already masked off on the outside. I'm just going to put in this control panel up here. Then I can put the main canopy transparency on. I'm going to start building the tail piece by putting this together first. This is the cap on the tailpiece. Put this together first. As usual, comes in two halves. Clamp it up, glue it together. And it's the same with the tailplane itself. Just place the two halves together, clamp them up and then glue in place. I'm a believer in doing more than one thing at once so whilst things are drying and setting or whatever um, I do other things to do the kit and so I can whilst the tail is setting I can get on with my sea skewer missiles uh, the body goes together in two halves there's a a back portion goes on and then there are four little fins that go on as well so I'll build those up while I'm waiting for the tail and the top of the fin can go into place. And this inner piece can go into the end of the top section. Right, so That's the rotor hub assembly. The, this base for the rotor hub here, it's in two parts, goes together. So these two halves of the rotor head assembly go together with a bit of extra thin cement and we'll wait for that to dry. Then when it's ready, it can fit onto the main hub and there's a little notch so it sits in the right position on the hub like so. Then there are these four pitch control arms that come off the axis of the hub.
There are these strange um, transparent parts that go on here, like engine covers. Now, I'm assuming on the real helicopter these are like gauzes um, to stop foreign objects getting in, like coarse filters basically. So, but they're, for some reason they've been moulded on transparent, presumably because cores you can look through. So you have to paint in the uh, framework and um, leave the rest transparent. And it just looks a bit weird to me. Perhaps if you've got some, um, you could sort of spray a light coat of something like the Revel Smoke transparent, just to give it, dull it down a bit grey. But also I would... What I'm going to do is put this on, but then um, I do have to semi mat the whole thing anyway, do a satin coat anyway, and that will just take down this gloss of this transparent part, because otherwise I think it looks actually looks a bit silly. Um, the other thing is, instantly you have to hand paint these, because although it's a transparent part, it's not actually transparent, so um, I didn't get masks for these in the masking set I got, which is a bit annoying as well. So there we go, the, these appear to be inlet filters. Right, with uh, n another coat of uh, uh, satin varnish on top, now I'm going to start taking off some of these masks because I won't be doing any more varnishing. For notice where the hub goes into the wheel itself and just pushes in. Let's give it a push from the back. It won't go completely flat, but it will come out right at the front there. Then, when you're ready, the wheel can go onto the nose leg like that, and just make sure you get the flat spot here perpendicular to the line of the wheel, or the line of the, the leg. So that's going to make sure it sits flat when it's on its wheels. It's the same process for the main wheels, except of course that they then go onto gear legs we've already put on. But once again, it's important to get the flat spot at the bottom. Sadly, there are no pegs to make sure this happens. So you just have to kind of set it. What you can do, actually, this is a very, very good fit. So what you can do is um, put it roughly right, try it out, and then tweak it before you set it in place with some glue. Right, start on the rotor blades now. And I've painted the blades already. Then these intermediate things need to go in these covers for the blade it shaft itself go on there's a little notch that tells you where which exactly how to put it into place right then there's this fork type thing it goes on here and connects here this is um kind of tensions the blade straight when it's straight then one by one start gluing the main rotor blades into the hub, like so. I've just supported the middle and then I'll support each blade with a little bit of blue tack or something like that, um, just so it sets properly. When you've got the blades in place, uh, it's a good time to start putting these grips on, these stays for them. Um, they will go on and this will help stabilise the whole assembly because it is really quite difficult otherwise. You might have to be a bit inventive about how to keep these things in place while they set. Um, yeah, I'm just doing my best here. It's not going to be perfect but it'll be okay. It'll be close but not perfect. Right, on the tail here, I've put in this little stub, which is the drive for the tail rotor. 
and then I can put the tail rotor in. The tail rotor comes as a single piece for most of it, but there's just this little uh, thing here that uh, makes sure the pitch of each blade stays the same, that just glues on top. So, But mainly it's a single piece, decals for the colourings here and the little markings here, otherwise it's dark green. Make sure you go around and have all of these many aerials in place. Because there are a lot of them. There really are a lot. And some of them are very small. And some are in really odd places. But, go through, make sure all of them are on. Because you don't want to miss any out. That would be a tragedy. You also want to fit the windscreen wipers. one more tiny teeny tiny aerial to go on at the nose there we go the weapons pylons clip into the side here um, better to do this before the rotors go on if you're doing it with the rotors. Actually, in any case, just put it on before the rotors go on, if I were you. I've put the tail on here, this, this bracket, um, fit it to the tail, and then it can slot into the back end of the um, main aircraft tail here. And then there's this small peg you can see just down here, fits into a hole in the side, and that sort of locates that. Um, this arm, this uh, rotor support arm I've got to repaint here because it broke and so I've had to fix it and didn't have time to paint it so that needs painting then I need to paint the whole of the rotor assembly as well in um, dark grey I uh, can attach the stores as well I'm using depth charges on the inner pylons and sea skewer missiles on the outer pylons So there it is, the Westland Lynx. Um, it was, it's quite a kit to do. You know, I was quite um, cocky when I did the box opening. Oh, this is a skill level four. Don't know why that is, because it's, it's uh, Spitfire was a skill level four. Well, now I know why it's a skill level four, because it takes a lot of time and effort and skill to build. It's not something you would attack as a starter. That's for sure. Um, the body goes together, it's, it's all sorts of fit issues I have with the body, a lot of them probably to do with me, I don't know, um, there's a lot of gaps and bits of filler at places I really didn't imagine there would be, <clears throat> um, and towards the end I was kind, kind of rushed it, you'll see there's, there's not much footage on the videos and it's all, I'll just chuck this in and get that in. Frankly, I was just getting it to the end of it because I really wasn't enjoying it. Would I build another one of these? No, I wouldn't. Um, now, I'm not saying it's a bad kit because I don't imagine it is. It's actually, it's, it makes a lovely Lynx. It has a few fit issues, which I'm, some of some, some are my fault, some are the kit's fault, I'm sure. But I just didn't enjoy it. Now, I don't build a lot of helicopters. Maybe that's one thing. I'm, I'm not a helicopter builder. Um, but I just didn't enjoy the process very much. If you love helicopters and you love all the intricacies and you're happy with spending lots of time and dry fitting and refitting and dry fitting and refitting and all that, then you can probably make a fantastic model of a Lynx with this. But I'm just not that kind of modeler, I'm afraid. So. While I wouldn't say it's absolute rubbish, steer clear of it, I personally would say, really, it is skill level four. Make sure you're a, 
a confident modeler before you crack into this. Um, it might be a tiny bit easier if you don't do everything folded up, but actually not really. <laughs> to be honest, not an all, really an awful lot easier. Quite a hard build for me. Um, not one I'll be doing again. But you know what? The re end result isn't awful. The end result is actually pretty okay. But um, it's the process I didn't enjoy. And that to me is actually 90% of, of what I do. Anyway, uh, I don't know what you think. But um, that's just my opinion anyway. There it is then. The Westland Links. I did have a hard time making this. Um, it really is for a good modeler, and I ain't one of those yet. But, do you know what? The result isn't terrible, and I'm happy enough with it. Um, but really, if you're thinking about buying one of these, really, really make sure you're a pretty confident modeler, or you've got a lot of time to spend on it. But it's worth it in the end, I guess. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, if you have, please remember, imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. And you'll be notified of all the future videos that arrive on my channel as they pop up. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.